red and blue. Andre Showell explains, or examines rather, the role the military plays in shaping lives. Congressman Charles Rangel built a thriving career in politics. Beryl Hammond built a $90 million corporation. And the Jackson family built a happy home, all with help from the U.S. military. Okay, bring the whole thing in. As a Korean War veteran, Congressman Rangel faced a life and death encounter that left him a changed man. Uh, I oft times have said that on November 30th, 1950, I was left for dead, I was wounded, I was praying, I survived, but I haven't had a bad day since then. Rangel would go on to become the ranking member of the Ways and Means Committee and recently proposed an effort to explore reinstituting the draft. He, like many African Americans, saw the military as a financial way out. But most of the people who are attracted to serve in the military I do so for economic reasons, as I did, as my brother did. At the opportunity to learn marketable skills was incentive enough for retired Colonel Burl Hammond. Uh, there was all this, also this culture of you can get the job done, you can do it. You know, there's no mission too great. A mindset that might explain how in 12 years, Hammond turned a small business by the name of Interlog Incorporated into the nation's leading logistics systems company. Ten years or so in the military, is one heck of a preparation for for being successful in life and, and business in the commercial world. Defense Department figures from 2000 seem to support that belief. In that year, 22 percent of the enlisted force was black, compared with 12 percent of the civilian labor force of 18 to 44 year olds. That's a near two to one ratio. Strict equal opportunity policies have made the military an attractive draw for African Americans. College tuition payments and home loan guarantees are also among the benefits of military service. While many find career opportunities in the military, the Jackson family found something else. Things grew, love blossomed, and next thing you know, they were married. The Air Force is so big on families, and yeah. with us, we, we decided ourselves to wait approximately 13 and a half, 14 years before we had our great daughter, Alexis. And as their family grew, so did their understanding of the world. You meet so many people, and the more people you meet, you know, you get a taste of their lifestyle, their culture, and you learn from that. They have taught me when it's time to lead and when it's time to follow. They have done those things that I think I was looking for at 17 years old. While life in the military has its share of hardships, it can also provide the building blocks for lawmakers, deal makers, and homemakers to succeed. In Washington, Andre Showell, BET Nightly News. Former New York Times reporter Jason Blair may be laughing all the way to the bank. Blair is reportedly shopping a book documenting his journalistic fraud. In one incident, he fabricated a description of the West Virginia home of former POW Jessica Lynch, a place he never visited. In a recent interview with the New York Observer, Blair said he laughed when he heard the correction the Times was forced to print. The description was just so far off from reality, he said. The way they described it in the Times story, someone read a portion of it to me. I just couldn't stop laughing. Blair also said in the interview both racial preferences and racism played a role in his career, and he would argue that they didn't balance each other out. Blair said racism had much more of an impact. Lawyers for former NBA star Jason Williams have requested state police records and a new venue for his manslaughter trial. Defense attorneys say police records will show if any of the state workers involved in the case have ever been accused of racial profiling. They also say publicity surrounding the case may prevent Williams from getting a fair trial in the New Jersey County where he lives. Williams is accused of recklessly handling a shotgun that killed a limo driver last year. A lawyer for the man accused of killing four black girls in the infamous Alabama church bombing says his client was taped illegally. He's seeking to overturn Thomas Blanton Jr.'s conviction on the grounds that eavesdropping to obtain evidence wasn't allowed in 1964. Alabama Attorney General Bill Pryor says current laws aren't retroactive. He compared Blanton to a terrorist. If, if this was not an act of terrorism, I don't know what was. What occurred on September 15, 1963 was and still is the w most despicable crime in the history of this state. In the so-called kitchen sink tapes, Blanton talked about a meeting to make bombs. In Louisville, Kentucky, a slave memorial was unveiled this morning at a site where African Americans were enslaved during the 1800s. 
Farmington Historic Home was a location where about 60 slaves harvested hemp on the plantation between 1809 and 1865. A medallion now commemorates and celebrates the lives of those individuals. The house and gardens will be open year-round. In our nation's capital, a push for a National Museum of African American History and Culture. U.S. Senator Sam Brownback of Kansas and U.S. Representative John Lewis of Georgia held a news conference to introduce legislation for the museum. It is needed because there is not anything in the nation's capital to tell the story, the complete story and the history of African Americans, the contribution that African Americans have made not just to our nation but to the world. It'll go through the tragedy and the triumph. It'll go through the difficulty and, and the, uh, the achievements. Uh, it, it really is to try to cover the totality of the experience to date of African Americans in this country. The bill would create a national museum of African American history and culture within the Smithsonian Institution. The legislation would put the museum on or next to the mall. Well, we come right back here for you. An important wake-up call for anyone who's battling diabetes. Also, what Quincy Jones is doing to make sure sick children have access to the best health care available. Plus, behind hip-hop music, a look at the men who made the culture of hip-hop into a global business. Where we were planning our vacation online, that's when the pain started. Digititis is a repetitive stress injury, just like carpal tunnel syndrome, except different. Basically, it feels like a fleshy fireball on the end of my hand. We're seeing an explosion of this, all the double clicking that's going on. If we catch this early, we can help. Search all you want, but you won't find our low fares on Travelocity, Orbix, or Expedia. Next time, just click on Southwest.com. It's the only place online you can find our low fares. You are now free to move about the country. What are you going to do with your share? I'm going to get speakers so loud they blow women's clothes off. Yeah. Five partners. For the next 45 minutes, we own this place, gentlemen. One perfect job. <laughs> Steve, what are you doing? I made a few plans of my own. On May 30th, they're not in it for the pay. If you want to start the game up again, that's fine with me. They're in it for the payback. Stop them before they hit the street. <laughs> the Italian job. The game is over. It's over when I say it's over. Yeah! Maybe PG-13. Special sneak preview Saturday. Hey, Ray, look at all those movies, huh? You think I could be a movie star, Carl? Can you act? Oh, I could act like a movie star. <laughs> this is an imported water. You call this a hell spa? Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. Huh? These are brown. I specifically asked for green. Blockbuster has two great ways to bring home Antoine Fisher, the directorial debut of Denzel Washington. Now you can rent Antoine Fisher on DVD or video, or you can buy it on DVD. So whether you rent or buy, make it a Blockbuster night. One of your favorite gospel shows is now a full hour. Crazy way through. Catch the feeling with Brother Gerard on Lift Every Voice, Sundays at 10.30 a.m. Mad Sports is making a new move to a full hour of sports, music, and entertainment every Saturday at 12 noon. Mad Sports, every Saturday at 12 noon. Spoken word has... We made a commitment, a commitment to our community and to what makes our community strong, education. We're rededicating ourselves to supporting education by providing grants to educational institutions and offering scholarships to aspiring math and science students. At ComEd, we believe working together helps our children create the best future for all of us. ComEd, recommitted to keeping things bright. Comcast High Speed Internet Service is the fastest way to download photos. Hey, I'm emailing your wedding pictures right now. Cool. Kelly, Bob's emailing the wedding photos. Oh, great. Oh, honey, come take a look. And uh, one special shot from your bachelor party. Download photos fast, really fast. Michael! Comcast High Speed Internet. A new diabetes campaign urges diabetics to do some footwork. Doctors say more diabetics need to check their feet for abnormalities that could be caused by the disease. According to the American Diabetes Association, there are 82,000 amputations associated with diabetes every year. Doctors say 85% of those amputations could be avoided with proper foot care. One million Americans develop diabetes every year, and there are over 200,000 deaths attributable 
to diabetes in the united states each year and that is probably an underestimate of truly the number that die associated with diabetes public service announcement asking diabetics to take care of their feet will begin running this week a major drug corporation has pledged to increase the fight against the AIDS epidemic. The Pfizer Foundation said today it will provide $3 million for HIV prevention programs in nine states in the South. The money will be distributed over a three-year period to small and medium-sized HIV prevention organizations. According to Southern AIDS Coalition, seven of the ten states with the highest AIDS rates are in the South. Researchers say blacks living in three largely rural states are more likely to develop colon cancer and die from the disease than whites. Those states are Kentucky, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. Penn State conducted the study. The school used data from thousands of colon cancer cases in the three states from 1994 through 1998. Well, treating African-American skin can be a complicated matter. But Dr. Susan Taylor offers advice and solutions in her new book called Brown Skin. In it, she looks at four common skin problems, discoloration, acne, hair loss, and scarring. The first thing that many people don't understand is that these problems are treatable. They're safe and effective treatment geared towards their skin that can improve the problem. Dr. Taylor's book, Brown Skin, will be in bookstores on May 27th. Entertainer Quincy Jones is orchestrating a bold new initiative to improve health care for children worldwide. The partnership between Jones's Listen Up Foundation and the Children's National Medical Center in Washington, D.C. will utilize cutting-edge telemedicine technologies. Jones says it's up to everyone to help provide quality health care to our children. And it is our responsibility to nurture both their minds and their bodies. There's this wealth of untapped greatness in our younger generation that just needs a little jump start to come forth. And it's up to all of us, every one of us, to make this happen. And Jones proudly shared that he is the father of seven children. Up next here for you, an inside look at the business of hip-hop. We'll show you who's making the money and how. When the BET Nightly News comes right back, keep it here. Well, pay for chasing. Well, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Howard Sandman Sims, the legendary tap dancer who was once a fixture at the Apollo Theater's amateur night, has died. Sims was best known for shooing unsuccessful contestants off the Apollo stage. He earned the nickname Sandman because his tap routine called for gliding through sand sprinkled onto the stage. Sims was a mentor to many young dancers, including Gregory Hines. He died in a nursing home after a long illness. Well, the godfather of soul had a reason to rejoice in a South Carolina courtroom yesterday. State Department of Probation, Parole, and Pardon Services pardoned James Brown for his past crimes in that state. Brown served a two-and-a-half-year prison term after his 1988 arrest on drug and assault charges and was convicted of a drug-related offense in 1998. The 70-year-old Brown sang God Bless America after the decision. When asked how he felt after the verdict, Brown responded, I feel good. Well, whether it's music, fashion, or movies, Hip-hop entrepreneurs are making huge strides in the business world. But what challenges do they face after they blow up? Well, a new documentary offers a look at some of the men who've helped make hip-hop a $5 billion industry. I rise to the occasion. My grace is amazing. Disturbing the Peace Entertainment is all about working from the ground up. If you can't sell in your hometown or you can't sell like to the folks that live next door to you or your neighbors, then how the hell are you going to sell to anybody else? Ludacris offers some business advice that helped him make it as a multi-platinum selling rapper and as the CEO of his own record label. His advice and his music are featured in a new documentary called Paper Chasers. We reached a certain point where I was like, who can I go peep some of the game? Who can I go learn from game? from other than successful hip-hop entrepreneurs who are already out there doing it. The documentary features lessons from top business minds in the hip-hop community and explores the success of men like Master P, Russell Simmons, and Damon Dash. I'm always looking to get money. I'm constantly trying to get my paper. Dash is CEO of Rockefeller Enterprises. The conglomerate has holdings in a record label, clothing line, movie, and liquor companies. Just recently, he added a New York nightclub to the list. In order for me to properly make sure that everything that I want in my mind to happen in real life, I got to kind of be there because no one can really know what's on my mind but me. Dash has faced his fair share of challenges as a hip-hop mogul. Yeah, I would have to say in the movie business, I had to really make my space as of recently. You know, no one was respecting me as a producer. 
or anything else for that matter until I started really physically giving him something tangible to touch. Jeffrey Tweedy, who launched the Sean John clothing line with P. Diddy six years ago, also had to gain respect as a young businessman entering the fashion world. Whether it's theater or whether it's music, fashion, whatever, you have to make sure you have that business mind because that's, that is the key, understanding the business of what you're getting into. Russell Simmons co-founded Def Jam Records and now is involved in a number of highly successful ventures. He's been a trailblazer and an inspiration to others who followed in his footsteps. They didn't get here because they went to work to be hip-hop moguls and then, you know, a couple years down the road they quit. They stuck with their goals and their dreams. And that's really what people need, resilience. To those people who have a passion in life and a vision in their head and are going to just go out and make a move on it and not stop it till they get it. You know, that's, that's the commonality. And that is our news for this Wednesday evening. We thank you so much for joining us. For the BET Nightly News, I'm Jackie Reed. Have a great night, everybody.